Well, I said it would happen. I said it would happen. I think we are on the verge of quite a significant Tory rebellion. Now, this is just me thinking that. But, I think the signs are there. Because Boris Johnson's charm can only take him for so long. And as many people have said, the honeymoon period for a lot of these Red Wall MPs, many who have been voted in for the first time, many who are a bit skittish about opposing their own government for the first time, are constantly under bombardment throughout most of this year by their constituents who voted Conservative probably for the first time being constantly told that next election I'm not voting Conservative because of what you've done. Let's just go over some of the brief things shall we. You've got hundreds of thousands of people in the North unemployed. You've got a furlough scheme coming to the end at the end of this month which is going to render even more people unemployed. The region of the north, especially most of these guys, are in tier 3 lockdown, meaning that even more businesses are on the verge of failing, if not already potentially are. And the money that they have been offered is just quite frankly not enough to keep them alive. You've also got the GCSE crisis that we had during the summer, where hundreds of thousands of young people were essentially screwed over because of their 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 grades. If you were in a in a private school, you got amazing grades. If not, you got potentially screwed out of your grade and all that work that you've been doing to try and get your good GCSEs. They got bombarded with continuous letters. The continuing failures of the coronavirus crisis has just been absolutely, um, you know, plain to see. The Tory new town fund, which was meant to be going to towns in the north, turns out of the 40 of the towns that were selected, 30 of them, yes, 30 of them are not in the north, they're in the Midlands. So only 10 towns in the north, which this fund was meant for to help them, quote, level up, um, are now getting that money. So can you see a potential break here in this line? Because here you have quite a potential gaggle of, of MPs who, if they got their heads together could form quite a successful opposition against Boris Johnson and even rival the ERG in terms of actually being able to wield power against Boris Johnson's government. The potential is there, folks. It's there. Um, I think that, shall we say, the the powder is, is being mounted and all it needs is just a strong enough match, a str just a single spark, and I think we could see a major backbench Tory rebellion by all these 50 Conservative MPs, who you might be aware and willing to know this, that even in the media, even in Conservative media, these are still called Red Wall seats. Many of them will be fighting to try and continue their <laughs> their their you know their MP ship. I've said it's very likely the next general election they ain't gonna get re-elected. But, you know, <laughs> maybe unless they, you know, we could see some uh path crossers, people who say, Right, I'm out of this, I'm going back to Labour. You could see that, it's potential, it could happen, who knows, but that's a big, big if, and like I say, that is a, a massive, um, you know, fantasy probably of that happening. But who knows? Uh, we could see it, but I think this potentially here is the start of something. So, this comes from the Guardian. It's Boris Johnson urged to publish public friendly data en route out of lockdown. And if you remember our comment of last week's um, disastrous. Um, 
Pub, uh, Prime Minister's Question Time by Boris, where he was challenged to give a route out of lockdown. He's now been challenged by his own MPs, these northern MPs, to provide them that route. Anyway, so we'll get into it. So the former minister behind a group of more than 50 Conservative MPs in Northern England have warned Boris Johnson to get uh, that their constituency is being risked left behind. Um, that's sort of what the Conservatives do. They just leave it behind. So good on you for, for trying to stick it for your constituency. Um, just the wrong party. Sorry. <laughs> so amid the pandemic... That has urged, it has urged Downing Street to provide people with clear data showing a route out of restrictions. Jake Berry called for information to be published in a easy digestible, consumer-facing, public-friendly way. Akin to how a church hall uses large mock thermometers to display progress in fundraising efforts. It follows a letter from the Northern Research Group, led by Berry. I love it. There's a northern re research group. As I said, this and these MPs are, if they got their act together, could really be a strong force in the Conservative Party. And as we've said before, uh, the Conservative Party is a party within parties. And when it is whole, united and unified, it tends to do pretty well um, at elections. And normally in government, apparently not this time, but this could prove a significant strike against Boris. And it could be even these 55 uh, Northern Conservative MPs who indeed wield the knife to, shall we just say, axe Boris Johnson. So led by Berry, a former Northern Powerhouse Minister, in which 55 MPs expressed fears that the government's levelling up agenda was being abandoned. The letter will send alarm bells ringing in number 10, as many of the MPs represent former Labour constituencies in the north of England, which helped Johnson win a major majority last election. What did I say? <laughs> so, with, uh, with restrictions continuing to be extended, 8.2 million people in England will be living under Tier 3 lockdown this week, forcing the closure of pubs, bars and other parts of the hospitality sector, hospitality sector, sorry, including vast swathes of the north. The letter to the Prime Minister on Monday called for a roadmap out of the tiered lockdown system, warning that restrictions are disproportionately affecting people in the north. Fleshing out his position, Berry told BBC's Radio Force Today programme on Tuesday, I think we need a consistent and clear data to be published that shows not just council leaders, but also the public and businesses alike how they are doing in tackling this pandemic. If you visit any church hall or scout hut around the country, you'll see uh, this sort of thermometer on the wall telling them how they're getting towards that new roof and incentivizing people to provide them data bringing with them uh, bring uh, them with the, the bringing them with you it will lend an understanding to them that they are part of what this great battle we're fighting against covid is it will i think increase compliance and also a route out of those restrictions it is an obvious part of the route to recovery which is what we have written to the prime minister seeking as a group of northern mps uh, i'm glad there are still at least some some competent people in the Conservative Party but um, Johnson ain't going to do that. <laughs> he ain't going to deliver uh, on that. Asked what more he was asking of the government when the Health Secretary had said that the rate of inspections needs to be falling and hospitals need not be over, over full. Berry added I would like to see on a personal basis is that information is provided in an easy digestible customer facing public friendly way and that can show that people, there is a route out of these restrictions. In the letter, MPs, MPs expressed concerns that the cost of COVID could be paid for by, uh, by downgrading the levelling up agenda. The northern constituencies, like ours, will be left behind. The group asked the Prime Minister to create a pathway out of the down, out, uh, a pathway down the tiering system, and 
and to accelerate key road, rail and social infrastructure projects and job creation. He could also help also develop a tailored economic recovery plan for the North, they said. Good luck for that, guys. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> but business minister, uh, the, but the business minister, uh, Nadam uh, Zawawi, defended the government's support uh, for the North and the Midlands, highlighting that 45 places due to benefit from its 3.5 billion uh, billion and its town funds are in the North, and 30 are in the Midlands. So, again, and this new town fund is, is, I think we've gone over this before, is nothing. It literally much gives towns, like, an extra five pounds. You know, great, I suppose, <laughs> but I don't see what local council is going to be able to do with that, <laughs> to be honest. Pressed on why Northern Tory MPs were expressing the concern, Zoawi said that they were champions of their area telling Sky News that they want to make sure that their northern powerhouse strategy that Jake Berry and others have worked so hard on with myself and I'm the local growth minister as well as being the business and industry minister, it, 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 that it is delivered. And that this is absolutely our focus and you will see that coming through in our refresh of the industrial strategy. Meanwhile, the Liverpool mayor, Joe Anderson, has backed the idea for a possible fourth tier of COVID restrictions if the third category, category that, his, that his city is in does not go far enough to halt the spread of the virus. Anderson told BBC Breakfast that he was not opposed to the introduction of tougher measures if necessary, saying that he would review the results of the tier three restrictions in 14 to 16 days time. So we've got a very, very serious uh, problem there. Very serious problem. And I tell you now, um, just because you're a conservative MP in the North, um, don't expect these handouts. Why on earth, just because you're a conservative MP sitting on what was a traditionally a, a, a red wall seat, um, bear in mind the media, politicians and everyone else still calls them that. So... I, like I say, these MPs are not sitting very comfortably, to, to coin the phrase, at all. Um, but this will just continue to go and go on. And in these uh, red wall seats, there are Labour councillors who have massive networks who are already preparing uh, for the next election to try and mobilise against these Conservative MPs. Because next time, there's no Brexit to try and save them that won't split the vote. And they've done already such a colossally bad job just in their first year that it's enough ammunition to basically get rid of them. And look, this idea that Johnson and the Tories have to quote, level up the North, congratulations for standing up for it, but it just doesn't go far enough. 3.5 billion in the grand scheme of things is nothing. And yes, I do agree that this town fund should be extended to, you know, the Midlands as well as well to other towns that need it. But this 3.5 billion does not replace the money that the European Union was giving these towns. So, once again, <laughs> um, you know, it, it just goes beyond ridiculous. But you can even see, this is going to be the path that we are probably going to see post-Brexit of the government is going to try and give money to these places to try and replicate stuff that they got from the EU. And it's going to be nowhere near at least the level or even amount of support that they got from the EU. And then a lot of these places, you can just turn around and just go, well, we did tell you what happens when we leave the EU. You won't get that support anymore. Uh, but there you go. So, clearly, a lot of places in the north are learning very quickly um, that they shouldn't have trusted the Tories and that they will continue not to trust the Tories. And indeed, the Tories have bred an entire new generation to not like them. Because those 16-year-olds in about 
two years time, which you screwed over on their GCSE results and A-level results, will be able to vote. And if, again, if Momentum can get its act together and really mobilise that youth movement, again, like they have always been doing fantastic jobs in actually getting that movement done, they could actually make a significant difference. But anyway, that's uh, definitely something for another time to talk about. And of course, please do hit that like and share button. It does help out the channel massively. And of course, if you are new, please do hit that subscribe button to see more videos about British politics and of course, Brexit. Because this is one shadow that will be hanging, hanging over the UK government for some time to come. So, uh, if you would also like to support the channel in a different way, there are links down below to my Patreon page as well as a one-off donation link should you like to support me in that way. And thank you very much to the people that do support me. Your support is very, very much appreciated. And with that, thanks for watching and we'll see you all next time.